Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be continuing on with the video that I shared with you last time where I showed you my development environment set up for creating assembly language programs for the new Commander X16 computer. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you uh, a bit of a kind of a workflow that I developed for actually using these development tools just to make life a bit easier in case you're not really sure how to use these tools kind of effectively. And of course, I'm not an expert on these tools, but I have kind of figured out a way that seems to work well for me in order to effectively and efficiently do some testing as I'm creating a program and I want to run it in the emulator and maybe make some changes to it and see what effects it's having in the debugger. So I'm just going to show you how I set up my system and how I actually use these tools so far for effectively doing some programming and making some changes and seeing how those changes affect the system when I'm doing the testing for that program. So if that sounds interesting to you and you want to kind of get a head start on using these tools effectively, then stick around and we're going to take a look at it right now. All right, so let's take a look at how we can quickly and easily navigate around these tools to make our programming life a bit easier. At least this is the method that I've come up with that seems to be working uh, for me pretty well so far. And the first thing we want to do, of course, is to type in our assembly language program into the editor, which in this case, I'm using the Visual Studio Code editor that I showed how to set up the environment in my last video. And we don't need to be too concerned with what this program actually does. Uh, what it's going to do is just print a line of text on the screen, which in this case is my score, followed by a number, which it's going to take from this list of data up here. Again, we don't need to be too concerned with what this program is actually doing, but there are two parts of this listing that I do want to draw your attention to. Well, maybe three parts. The first part is this top section here, which creates a one-line basic program or a basic header, which we're going to be able to use to run our machine code program from within our emulator simply by typing the word run, which we'll see in a moment. And we want to be aware of a couple addresses as well. So you can see this address up here of 0801 hexadecimal. It says the basic program is expected to start at 0801. So that is where this basic header begins in computer memory. And if we look down here at this section where I have a jump underscore start instruction, this is where our actual machine code program will begin. And it starts at memory location 080D. So we need to just take note of this address, 080D, as well as there's one more address we want to take note of, which is down here at address 0810. And this is where the bytes of data for our program will be stored. So the bytes of data are different from the actual machine code bytes, which represent machine language instructions, whereas these bytes of data just represent simply data. They're not machine language instructions. So now once we have our program typed into our editor, the first thing we can do is go ahead and press the F4 key, which I explained in my last video, which will, in my case, assemble our program. And so we can do this just to test if the program is actually working and can be successfully assembled. So I'll go ahead and press F4 now. And there you can see it's assembling and it has successfully assembled our program into a 72 byte machine code program. So now what I want to do is go ahead and open our emulator. And since I haven't opened the emulator yet, what I'm going to do is press the F5 key, which as I showed in my previous video, will reassemble my program and automatically open the emulator as well as automatically load our machine code program into the emulator. So I'll go ahead and press F5 now, and it's reassembling the program, and there it's opened the emulator, and it has also loaded our program into memory. And we can confirm that by typing list. And there you can see our one line basic program, which will execute our machine code program when we go ahead and type the word run, just like that. And there it outputs the line of text onto the screen, which is what my program is designed to do. So now if we wanted to modify our program, we can go back to the listing right here. And now let's say I wanted to change my program. And for example, I'll change my score here to player score, just like that. And just remember when we're 
saving our program, we need to make sure we save it under a name that our tools are going to use to be able to assemble this program into a machine code program. And again, I explained all this in the previous video. So in my case, I've saved my program with the name j.asm, and that's going to be assembled into a machine code program called j.prg. And that's what gets loaded into our emulator. So now that I've modified my program, I want to reassemble it by pressing F4 right there. And since we still have our emulator open, I'll just go back to it right here and I'll reload the program with my changes by typing load j.prg. And there we have our program loaded with my changes. So now when I run this program, instead of printing my score, it should print player score, just like that. So that is how easily we can change our program and reload it into the emulator. So now let's see how we can use the debugger feature. All right, so to enter the debugger, all we need to do is press F12 on our keyboard. And there we are there. We see it's showing our memory locations as well as our registers, as well as a disassembly showing our program listing in the top left corner there. And so the first thing we need to do is change the output to display something that's meaningful for us. And so what I want to do is, first of all, change the value of the program counter. You can see it's currently set to CA87. And what I want to do is have that set to the start of my machine code program where those machine code bytes are stored in memory. And if we go back to my program listing here, you can see from my note here that the code will start at address 080D. And that's where my first assembly language instruction right here, which is jump underscore start, will be stored in memory at address 080D. So that is the address I want to set into the program counter back in the debugger window. And in order to do that, all I need to do is type R, which stands for register, and then a space, and then PC, which represents the program counter, meaning I want to change the value of the program counter register, and then another space. And then I just simply enter the address that I want my program counter to have. So in this case, I wanted to have a value of 080D. So I type it in just like that and press enter. And now you can see the program counter has a value of 080D, which is the start of my machine code program in memory. So when I go ahead and step through this program in a moment, it's going to begin execution starting at 080D, which is where my program is stored in memory, which is exactly what I want. So the next thing I want to do is change the display that's showing the disassembly window which shows the instructions of my assembly language program in the top left of this output here. So you can see right now it's showing us instructions stored at memory locations beginning at address CA87. So again, I want to change that to match my program counter, which is currently set to 080D. So it will show me the actual assembly language instructions of my program. And there are two ways I could do that. One way is I could go down here and I could enter D for disassembly and then a space and then the address that I want, which in this case is 080D. And I could type it just like that. And if I were to press enter now, it would change the output of the disassembly window to begin showing the instructions starting at address location 080D. But in this case, there is a simpler way I can do it. So I'll go ahead and erase this instruction. And now since I have my program counter set to 080D, in order to match the disassembly window to that address as well, all I need to do is press the F1 key, which I'll do now. And there you can see the disassembly window now matches the value shown in the program counter. So that's a quick shortcut we can use to change the output of the disassembly window as well. And you can see the output is now showing 080D as its first address, as well as the instruction of that address, which is jump 082D is currently highlighted in orange meaning that that is the next instruction that is going to be executed. So now what I want to do is change one more display setting, which is the memory dump, which is shown at the bottom left of this window. You can see right now it's displaying data beginning at memory location 0000. And I want to display data beginning at a different address. So let me go back to my program listing again. And if I go down to the section where I'm storing data in memory right here, 
you can see that this data is being stored at address 0810 according to my note here. So in order to change that display in my debugger, I'll go back there now. And what I want to do now is change the output of the memory dump window. So I simply type the letter M, which stands for memory dump, and then a space. And then I simply enter the address I want it to begin at, which in this case is 0810, just like that. So now I'll go ahead and press enter. And there you can see our memory display has changed. And now the beginning address is starting at 0810, which is where my data from my program is being stored in memory. And if we take a look at the value of the data that's showing on the screen here, you can see the values here listed AA010203040505 FF and FF. And this should match the data from my program listing right here, AA12345 FF FF. So the data from my program listing is now currently matching the data that's being displayed in the memory dump window in the debugger. All right, so now that I have the debugger window displaying the information that I want to see, I can go ahead and begin stepping through my program now. And you can see at the top here, the first instruction that's going to be executed is this jump instruction. And the way I go ahead and step through the instructions in my program is by pressing F11 on my keyboard. So I'll go ahead and do that now. And we should see it jump to address 082D. And there you go. You can see the address now at the top of the screen is 082D. And then here we have another jump instruction. This is a jump subroutine instruction. And it is going to jump to address 083E. So if I press the F11 key again, you can see the address has now changed to 083E. And now our next instruction is a load Y instruction. It's going to load the value of zero into the Y register. And we can watch that happen. Again, I'll press the F11 key. And there we can see the value in the Y register has changed to 00. And here we have a load A instruction. It's going to change the value in the A register. So I'll press F11 again. And now the A register contains a value of 50. And now our next instruction is an interesting one because it is a jump subroutine instruction as well. But this time it's going to jump to an address of FFD2. And the reason that is interesting is because FFD2 is actually the address of a ROM subroutine or a kernel subroutine, which we can see by going back to my program listing here, where I have a section right here titled kernel routines. And this section assigns values to labels that are representing subroutines that are stored in the system ROM, which is also known as the kernel. And here's the address right here from our debugger window, FFD2. So you can see this FFD2 value corresponds to a subroutine that I'm calling care out, chr out. So this is a subroutine that prints values to the screen. And the interesting thing about this number here is that if I go back to my debugger window, and you see now we're ready to jump to this ROM subroutine at address FFD2. Well, this ROM subroutine contains many instructions, and I don't necessarily want to step through each instruction that is located in this ROM subroutine or this kernel subroutine, but I do want this subroutine to execute. So now what I'm going to do, instead of pressing F11 to step through these instructions one by one, I'm going to press F10. And what that's going to do is it's going to execute this jump instruction, but it's going to run the subroutine and it's only going to break once it comes back or returns from that subroutine. So now if I go ahead and press F10, that ROM subroutine now has been executed and the computer has returned back to my program where it's ready for my next instruction, which is an increment Y instruction here. And now I can go back to pressing F11 on the keyboard, which should increment the value stored in Y. So right now the Y register contains a value of zero. And if I press F11, it increments that to a value of one. So this is how we can step through our program by using the F11 keys, or we can step through an instruction such as a ROM subroutine jump if we like, by pressing the F10 key, which uh, saves us from having to step through each instruction in that ROM subroutine line by line. And when we're ready to get out of this disassembler window and we want to go back to our regular emulator window, we can go ahead and press F5 on the keyboard. And it brings us back to the emulator window that we were using before. Now, there's one thing we can do in this emulator window, which is type the word mon. So I'll go down here to a new line and I'll type mon which is short for monitor. Actually, I could type the entire word monitor. And you can see this displays for us the contents of the registers. 
and sometimes when we exit from the debugger window and come back to this emulator, it might put you back into this monitor mode, showing you the register values here. And so in order to exit this monitor mode, all we need to do is type in X for exit and press enter. And there we are back at our ready prompt. So this is a quick way we can go back and forth between these development tools. We can go back to our program listing and make some changes, reassemble it, and then easily go back to our emulator window. And we can open our debugger window, check some values and step through our program line by line if we want. And we can easily go back and forth between these different tools now, which should make our development process a lot easier. Well, hopefully today's video has been interesting and informative for anyone who may be interested in developing assembly language programs for the Commander X16. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.